Joining us now, a man who made a name for himself playing 61 games for the San Jose Sharks this year. Played in the OJ with the Toronto Lakeshore Patriots. On to the USHL, two years at UMass, playing with one guy who we all know about as well. We welcome to the program, Mario Ferraro. Mario, how are you, my friend? What's happening? Hey, Steve, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Um, no problem. Much, you know, just hanging in here, getting uh, getting ready for you know the big day. So, Yep. So, conscious effort to go the oj route for you and when and and, and you know for those who don't know it's tier two keeps your ncaa eligibility and everything else when did you kind of make that decision that that was the route that you wanted to go mario um so i was actually i i really wanted to play in the ohl uh, that was my goal when i got drafted but um unfortunately i didn't well Fortunately, now when I look back at it, but I didn't make the uh, the OHL team. Barry Colts the the first year, and I played a year of juniors in, uh, in the OJHL for Toronto Patriots. And then after that, that year, I made the decision to you know um, you know go the college route. I thought it was best for me, um, get a little bit more time to develop and, and get bigger and stronger. So um, <laughs> fortunate for now, I think uh, it worked out pretty well. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically how it went down. I'm pretty sure I saw you play with the Don Mills Flyers. Because my kid was playing for the Mustangs, the the uh, the Double A team at the time, and we'd be there, and you'd be playing. Do you have any memories? If people don't know, that's a part of Toronto. Uh, it's a section in Toronto, and the Don Mills Flyers in the GTHL, the Chippewa, has been quite the program over the years. And that old arena, if I remember, is as cold as it gets. Do you have any memories of playing there? Oh yeah, no, that uh, that rink's a, a tough one to play, and that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, good thing yeah. we we're a lot smaller back then otherwise you know it would have been tough to move around out there as it, it already was so um the rooms weren't the cleanest either but no. uh, you know it's one of those old <laughs> hockey barns you, you appreciate now <laughs> when you were playing and don mills is famous for a lot of reasons and we'll get to the sharks and everything else but we're excited to have you on because it's you know you didn't know you were going to make it you, you, you get drafted don't play in barry you go the other route you go the ushl route what what was the minor hockey? You know, uh, they say U sixteen now, but you know, minor midget, minor bantam. Um, you know, did any of the other players on your club have, have, you, have you stayed in touch? And when you were at that age, were you like, hey, I still think now playing beer league, uh, Mario, somebody's going to call me. I'm going to get a I'm going to get a one year deal with Seattle or something. Um, were you thinking NHL or were you just kind of living your own thing? Uh, at that time, uh, minor hockey. I feel like I was always, it was always in the back of my mind. Um, but it's, it's the kind of thing where you're still starting to feel out the game and, and you're just, you're really enjoying it and playing it uh, for all for, for passion and, and making friends and stuff. And I made some longtime friends growing up uh, with the Toronto, playing for the Toronto Marlies and, and uh, Don Mills. And I still talk to guys today, to this day, and I actually play against some of them now. Um, but I think that, uh, that it really kind of, it kicked in, uh, once I got to, um, my minor, minor midget year, maybe major Bantam too, uh, as it got a little closer, but, um, that's where the passion really grew when you play at a young age, it did really set in stone. And then from there, you know, every year that went by, I feel like I was having even more fun and then it kind of transitioned, you know, let's take this as serious as I can and give it all. So. Um, that's kind of how how it developed, but uh, the minor hockey days are ones uh, you miss when you look back on, uh, for sure. But uh, there were great memory, memories uh, developed there. Watching this past season and just looking at your size and weight, you're not you're not a small guy, but I would have thought you would have been a forward. How'd you end up back in D? Yeah, I was always uh, I was always a D man. I gave forward a forward a shot a couple times. Well, I mean, I, I played some games here and there, um, and I enjoyed it. Uh, but I feel like the uh, D-man was always always my home. I was definitely undersized um, for defensemen growing growing up. Uh, but um, I don't know the position. I just like seeing the ice. I like being back there, seeing the ice, and, and being able to jump in the play. But also, you know, help out help out uh, defensively and, and help my goaltender back there. So uh, yeah, so a lot of people have said that <laughs> that they think I uh, should have been a forward. But um, I definitely enjoy back in the end. We're with Mario Ferraro, young defenseman of the San Jose Sharks, just turned 22. Uh, knock on wood, hasn't played in the AHL. Hopefully that never happens. Uh, two years at UMass. Uh, we'll get to a guy who played with you. He's pretty good um, in just a moment. But So how does the conversation go to leave? You're drafted when you played for Des Moines in the USHL, right? Two years at UMass, 
and then the decision to leave. Do your parents say, get your degree, Mario, get your degree, <laughs> uh, you come out and play? So give us some insight on how that works. I find that stuff fascinating. Yeah, that was um, that was a tough decision. Uh, it was it was a big moment for sure, and that was very it was a very exciting one too. You know, it's not every day that they get asked to you know sign a contract with the with the National Hockey League team, and especially being a San Jose Sharks, it was real fortunate. But it's it's definitely a tough decision. Um, but to be honest, my my parents um, they left that uh, at the end of the day they left that to be my decision. But they did give their advice. <laughs> they did give their advice. Um, and uh, I obviously took that because uh, they are my parents and they want what's best for me. But at the end of the day, I just felt like, you know, the opportunity is here. I've been working a long time for it and uh, I didn't want to let that pass by. Um, so it was it was a tough one to leave uh, my buddies at UMass, see the, the culture and the team that we had there. And um, obviously, like you said, getting your degree and stuff like that. But uh, my goal is, is to play in the NHL. Um, that's the job I want to have when I'm older. So um that's uh that's really what was going through my mind i I took the opportunity i took that next step guys like cal mccarr yeah that's a notable name from that team obviously who else did you like from that team you guys had a pretty good record and and greg carvel has had quite the history a coach coached the sam assistant with the senators for a while has been with st lawrence what was that experience like for canadians who aren't as familiar who are listening to american hockey Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. You know, you're like a family. Um, you know, you do everything together uh, when you're going to school. Uh, you know, you go to class together. You're living together in, in dorms and and off campus, whatever it may be. Um, so you get real, real close with the, with the group, and, and you you develop a real strong culture. And that's what Coach Carvel did a great job of. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of talent on our team, but I think that what went along with it that made us um, go far uh, was just the character we had and, and the bonds we shared. Um, you know, obviously you mentioned Kale McCarr, um, John Leonard, who just signed in San Jose, is a great player. Uh, Mitchell Chafee, um, just signed in Minnesota this past year. Um, you know, we had we had a lot of guys, um, and a lot of guys that that have been drafted recently in the last couple of years too, um, that are going to be making that step up, no doubt. Um, but yeah, it's it's a crazy experience. It's 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 honestly it's one that that uh, you want to hold on to. You want to hold on to those days and those memories that you had because um, they are special. But they they definitely go by fast. Two years that I had there uh, went by like a blink of an eye. So um, they're they're awesome moments and they're, they're ones you won't forget. We're with Mario Ferrero, defenseman with the San Jose Sharks. Uh, kind of living his life and the dream and route to the NHL. So uh, the next step is the NHL. You leave. What was the conversation with Doug Wilson? I can't promise you anything. You sign your entry-level deal and you compete for a spot. Maybe you thought you were going to the American League, So, but, but you make it and you basically play the full year. Tell us about last year as we went around the corner and you made the Sharks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I was I was very fortunate um, to be to be given the opportunities that I had last year um, to play in the NHL and to play against um, to play with and against some good players. Um, I was I was super fortunate. Uh, so it's always about being given that opportunity. And, and Doug Wilson, along with the coaching staff, definitely uh, gave me plenty of opportunities last year. Um, so. It was a very special moment, but le- leading into camp, it, it uh, there's nothing guaranteed, and, and there's nothing guaranteed for me this year either. It's all about you know coming into camp and, and proving that you can play and proving that you can help the San Jose Sharks, and you know that's the mindset that I had last year, and that's the mindset that I have this year going into camp. Same thing. Um, I gotta I gotta earn my spot. I gotta earn my role, and um, you know uh, the, the opportunities will come along with it as long as you put in that work. That's what I believe in, and. Um, so I'm kind of following that same path, and, and hopefully all things uh, work out. You're in a dressing room with guys like Brent Burns, Eric Carlson, Mark Edward Vlasic. We've had Brent on, and he's hilarious. Look, these are really good defensemen, as you know. What's that like? A little intimidating? What are they like as teammates? <laughs> well, Brent can be a little intimidating, that's for sure. <laughs> he's, uh, no, they're, they're, they're all... <laughs> Yeah, he'll 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 throw me a couple shots here and there, but uh, straighten me out and stuff like that. But no, they're great. Um, I mean, like you said, I'm surrounded by um, a lot of of uh, really well known, uh, not only defensemen but overall players in in the league and and around the world, uh, veterans and 
really Hall of Famers too. Uh, so to be able to play around them, it's 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 definitely a little intimidating at times because um, you know you want to want to make sure that that your game's on point and uh, you kind of want to impress them, right? You want to you want to uh, they're your teammates and you want to. There's no better gratitude than the ones you get from you know those around you that you play with, and so you want to do your best when you're when you're around them and. At the same time, when you when you take a step back and just look at it, uh, it's it's really special. Um, it's a really special moment for me, um, and an opportunity for me to be able to learn from these guys. So um, it's intimidating, but it pushes me to you know be a better player and, and to, to raise my level of play um, to match theirs, which is definitely uh, definitely hard to do. Something I got to work on, but uh, there's plenty of work to do it. Great stuff. Uh, next time we have you on, we can talk about what was it like with Joe Thornton. Um, he's in Toronto. That's basically where you're from. I'm uh, just looking at the prospects on the Marlies team. Michael McLeod, Taylor Radish, Cliff Pooh, uh, all players who've uh, done some good things and are going to do some great things as well. It's a pretty good team. No wonder the Marlies were always so good all, all, all the time. Um, you know, Mario, great to have you on. C- can continue your success. Thanks for doing this. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And now you're our San Jose guy. I'm friends with Bob Bugner. He'll take good care of you, okay? <laughs> great. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Happy holidays, everybody. Right back at you. Mario Ferraro, what a story. What a kid, eh, Mick? I mean, uh, he's uh, your future you know? co host 15 years from now. Keep that in mind. It's, yeah, and it's too bad that God hit him with the ugly stick, too. So you can't <laughs> tell from the radio. He's, a, he's an Italian yeah. god, for gosh sake. So, yeah.